long time ago, in a nice quiet village, there lived a wealthy merchant. He lived together with his doctor who was named Bawang Putih. This merchant's wife had long since passed away. The merchant was very fond of his doctor because she was obedient and kind-hearted. One day, as he came home from traveling, he brought a woman and her doctor along with him. He wanted to marry this woman. So, Bawang Putih now had a stepmother and a stepsister who was named Bawang Merah. When her father went to trade, her stepmother and Bawang Merah would treat Bawang Putih like a servant. Bawang Putih did all the work that was ordered by her stepmother. She cleaned the house, cooked, washed clothes, and looked for firewood. If Bawang Putih's work went wrong, her stepmother would punish her by not feeding her. Every morning, her stepmother and Bawang Merah took turns shouting, Hey Bawang Putih, wash my clothes! Not yet finished washing clothes, Bawang Putih would then be called by her stepmother. Bawang Putih, prepare breakfast now. We are hungry. Uh, oh, okay, mom. Because Bawang Putih worked so hard and was punished so harshly, her body became thinner. One day, Bawang Putih's father returned home and fell ill. He was very ill, and Bawang Putih was very sad because of it. She never left her father alone. However, God decided differently. Bawang Putih's father died. Father, don't leave me. Father, please, don't leave me. While Bawang Putih wept and cried, her stepmother and Bawang Merah were excited because the property and house of Bawang Putih's father now belong to them. Look, Bawang Merah, he finally dead. Yes, mom, we will be rich. Bawang Putih's life was miserable after her father's death, she no longer had her father to love and comfort her. Her stepmother and Bawang Merah always torture her. Bawang Putih tried to be patient, but sometimes she would cry at night. God, please help me. Why are they always mean to me? One day, Bawang Putih went to the river to wash clothes. She was sleepy and hungry. Her body was weak. While washing, Bawang Putih didn't realize that her stepmother's favorite scarf had washed away. When she put all the clothes into the basket, she was surprised to find her stepmother's scarf was not there. Mother's favorite scarf is gone. Oh no, it is drifting down the river. What should I do? I daren't go home. Mother will scold me. Finally, Bawang Putih decided to go back down the river to look for her stepmother's scarf. In the middle of the road, she met a farmer who was washing his cow. Excuse me, uncle. Did you see a red scarf floating down the river? The farmer nodded and replied, Red scarf? 
Hmm. Oh yeah, I saw it. The scarf was taken by an old grandmother who was washing her clothes by the river. The old grandmother's house is on the mountain. Hmm. Well, thank you, Uncle. Bawang Putih immediately headed up to the mountain. There, she found a wooden house. Bawang Putih knocked on the door. Excuse me, Grandma. Did you find my mother's red scarf? The old grandmother came out of the house and greeted Bawang Putih. Hi, dear. Let's go in. What's your name? My name is Bawang Putih, Grandma. The old grandmother will give her a red scarf with one condition. Bawang Putih must help her first. Bawang Putih agreed. All day, she helped the grandmother cook, look for firewood, clean the house, and wash clothes. For Bawang Putih, all this work was easy because she was used to doing it. Finally, it was time for Bawang Putih to go home. The grandma gave her the scarf. Bawang Putih, this is the red scarf you are looking for. Oh, I want to give you a gift. A pumpkin for you. Because you helped me. Choose which one you like. On the table, there were both small and large pumpkins. Bawang Putih chose a small pumpkin because she also had to carry a basket full of clothes home. I chose the small one, Grandma. Okay, take this little pumpkin. But remember, you can open the pumpkin until you get home. Understand? Well, Grandma, I will do everything you said. Arriving at home, Bawang Putih was scolded by her stepmother and Bawang Merah. Where have you been, Bawang Putih? How dare you go out without my permission? Forgive me, mother. I... I was... Stop! Enough, Bawang Putih. We don't need your excuses. They continued to beat her. Then... They saw the pumpkin brought by Bawang Putih. Cut the pumpkin and cook it. We are starving because of you. Bawang Putih took the knife and split the pumpkin. What a surprise! The pumpkin was full of sparkling and expensive jewelry. Huh? Where did you get the pumpkin? The mother and Bawang Merah shocked. Bawang Putih then told them everything. Oh, Bawang Putih, you should have chosen a large pumpkin. It would have had more jewelry, said Bawang Merah. Hearing the words of Bawang Merah, the stepmother finally got the idea. Looks like I have an idea. <laughs> the next day, the stepmother and Bawang Merah went to the river. They deliberately washed away the red scarf. Then, secretly, they followed the veil as it was washed away. Sure enough, the red scarf was picked up by the old grandmother. The stepmother and Bawang Merah followed the old grandmother who went up to the mountain. As they walked, Bawang Merah complained about how far it was. Tired. Let's just go home. Bawang Merah, be patient. Soon, we will get even more jewelry than Bawang Putih. But I'm tired, Mom. I said, be patient. Arriving at the old grandmother's house, the stepmother and Bawang Merah knock on the door. The old grandmother welcomed them warmly. Then, 
the stepmother and bawang merah pretended to be sad and asked about the red scarf. Dear grandmother, did you find my mother's red scarf? Oh yes! It just so happens that grandma found it on the river. Just like bawang putih, the old grandmother will give them the scarf if they help her. The only way to get the pumpkin was to walk to help the old grandma. But they still couldn't stop complaining. I'm so tired! If it weren't for the pumpkins, I wouldn't do this, said Bawang Merah. Yes, I'm tired too. Hopefully, there will be even more jewelry inside this pumpkin, said the mother. Finally, Bawang Merah and her mother finished their work at the old grandmother's house and said goodbye. The old grandmother gave the scarf to Bawang Merah and her mother. On the table, there are two pumpkins, one large and one small. Choose one pumpkin as a gift from me, said the old grandmother. And of course, the stepmother and Bawang Merah choose the largest pumpkin. Of course, I choose the big one, grandma. Yeah. Just the big one. Remember, don't open the pumpkin before you get home. Yes, Grandma, that's for sure. We will go home first, Grandma, said Bawang Merah. Bawang Merah and her mother do not obey the advice of the grandmother. On the way, the stepmother splits the big pumpkin. They were impatient to get their hands on the jewelry inside. Mom, let's just open this pumpkin now. The old grandmother will not know, said Bawang Merah. Yeah, let's open this. I'm also curious. However, they were in for quite a surprise. Because inside the pumpkin, there were venomous animals, such as snakes, scorpions, spiders, and centipedes. They were both bitten by a snake. Oh, what is this? Where's the jewelry? Why did it have these animals inside? Ew! Ow, ow! It hurts! Ow, ouch! Mom, what should we do, mom? Shut up, Bawang Merah. I also got beaten, said the mother angrily. Because they are still in the middle of the forest, no one came to help them. The stepmother and Bawang Merah died from the snake bite. Their greed brought them to disaster. Meanwhile, Bawang Putih lives happily ever after. The jewelry given by the old grandmother made her rich. She continued her father's business and enjoyed the fruits of her obedience and kindness.